Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. My book, Beyond the Lines, is about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness, which is what this show is all about. My special guest today is a man of great character and our new University of Hawaii football coach. He is Coach Todd Graham, and today we are going beyond football. Hey, Coach G, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Aloha, glad to be here, I appreciate you having me. Now, I knew you grew up in Texas, but I wanna know when did you start playing football? You know, I had three older brothers, so growing up in Texas, uh, from the time I could really, probably around five or six years old, we were playing tackle football out in the pasture behind my house. So, uh, I mean, I grew up, it was just a way I liked it. But also, we, we played everything. We played, uh, I played all sports, uh, uh, but football was definitely king. Uh, and it really was the identity of, uh, of most of our town and, and where I grew up, especially growing up at a, a, you know, it was basically a suburb of Dallas, Texas, a place called Mesquite, Texas, and the southeast side. And you know, I grew up being a Dallas Cowboy fan, and and football was uh, was uh, it was it was a way of life, and, and it was uh, something that uh, I'm very thankful for. And uh, but all my life, I've never known anything but competing. So, Coach G, what is it about football that you love so much? I think it's the relationships. Uh, you know, uh, it's uh, it's one of the things where it you know there's 11 players playing. Uh, the physicality of it, it's hard. It's rigorous. You spend an enormous amount of time practicing and training and preparing, and uh, it, it it emulates life. You know, uh, uh, you're gonna get knocked down. You're gonna get knocked on your can. You gotta learn how to get back up. And uh, football just teaches you that. It teaches you that that you, you, you reap what you sow, that, uh, uh, you know, you, you get what you work for and, and that, you know what, a life's not fair uh, and football sure isn't either. Uh, you're going to get knocked down. You just got to get back up and keep persevering. And, and so uh, it's something about the physicality of it and the rigor of it and the grit that it takes uh, that just, uh, it just it has always resonated with me. And, uh, and obviously I think that's why it's the, you know, it's a part of the American culture. It's a, a part of, of our great country and our nation, uh, because it speaks to the, to the character and to the heart uh, of our people. Yeah. You know, everybody loves football <laughs> and Coach oh, yeah. G, you were, you were the head coach at Rice University, Tulsa, Pitt and Arizona State University. For 12 years, you were a head coach in college and you took 10 of your teams and made bowl appearances. I mean, and through that, through those experiences, you've had one assistant coach with you the whole time, your wife, Penny. Why, <laughs> why are you guys such a great team together? Well, well, first of all, let me clarify. She's, she's the head coach. <laughs> yeah. She's not. So uh, I would report to her just so you know, but no, she is, I, I'll tell you, you know, from the time we met, uh, we just, uh, I can remember walking into the room when she was a, an assistant superintendent of, of uh, uh, curriculum and instruction and technology. And I was the athletic director and head football coach. And she just had a passion like I had. We shared this passion for wanting to make a difference in young people's lives. And so from the time that, um, that 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 she and I, uh, you know, became partners and and um, obviously got married. Uh, everything about that, y'all become a, a better person, a better man, a better teacher, better father. Uh, she just improved everything about you know, about me and 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 really uh, and um, uh, you know I, I would not uh, you know be the be the the person that I am or the coach that I am uh, without her. She has been just a tremendous. Uh, and I truly mean that a partner in this thing. And, and, uh, as we've, uh, gone on this journey together, uh, you know, she, she also knows football. She's, uh, she's watched a ton of film with me. Uh, she uh, knows every recruit. Uh, she's very, very involved and, and she's very, uh, uh, she's about community too. I probably learned more from her about how to connect with the community and, and whom we 
represent and whom we actually, you know, the, this says the University of Hawaii, we represent the great state of Hawaii and the people and the fans. And, and it's important that, that you communicate that we represent their values. And so she's been an amazing uh, partner for me. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I can tell you that, uh, you know, if you, if you had all the places that I've been on here and you were interviewing them, they'd be much more impressed with her than they were with me. <laughs> well, I'm definitely uh, looking forward to meeting her and Coach G. In 2010, when you were coaching Tulsa, you um, you won the Hawaii Bowl against Hawaii. But during the season, you your team beat Notre Dame. How did that make you feel beating such a big team like Notre Dame? Well, you know, it, it speaks to, you know, when we, we approach everything with our players is we don't set parameters on young people. You know, so many people, they all the preseason predictions. And I think we went into that game a 21 point underdog at, and we we're playing at Notre Dame and to, and to go in there and to, no one really give you a chance. And and but we weren't we weren't underdogs in our minds. You know, we believe that we had trained and prepared well. And also that we had we had put uh, you know in our hearts excellence in our hearts and and uh, you know the expectations that we had was to win every day and uh, we had we had a team that had very very strong character uh, we were very uh, uh, well trained and knew knew who we were and what we were about and uh, we went in there and that was a that was an incredible day there's nothing like going into Notre Dame uh, and and winning as a as a you know a a double digit underdog and um, matter of fact uh, you know that that uh, that quarterback is my offensive coordinator now uh, coach Kenny who uh, quarterback that team's my offensive coordinator uh, the running back coach from that team is my is, is my son Bo Graham who's actually our, our running back coach here and uh, got 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 a bunch of uh, Cody Cook our strength coach and, and coach Phillips all were a part of that team and and that was a special team and a special day and uh, uh, you know, but but it's also it wasn't something that we were surprised by, and I think we won the Kurt Herb Street Award for the the biggest upset of that year of 2010. Uh, but it wasn't an upset to us, and that's much how we'll approach things here at Hawaii. I mean, we're you know, I, I, I come here to win championships, uh, and that's on the field, off the field, and in the classroom, and everything that we do. Uh, we want to make a difference in the community. Uh, we want to make a difference in these young people's lives. And, and we also want to win championships. And uh, we're, we're going to work and we're going to prepare. Uh, and, uh, you know, we want, we, want, we want to accomplish special things like that because that truly impacts when you, when you go and you work hard for a common goal like that. And it takes such an amazing team effort. I can remember that game. We scored on special teams. We scored on defense. We scored on offense. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was a team effort. Uh, to make that happen, and that that's the biggest win in in University of Tulsa history, and so you know that that's very gratifying to be a part of that. But what's bigger to me is this is now looking back on the kids that played on that team and the values that they learned. That now they're championship husbands and championship fathers, and they're successful in life and 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 being productive citizens, and then and then passing that on and and teaching those values. Uh, to to uh, to their the people that they're working with as well as is to their kids and so that's that's what I'm proud of is that legacy of being a teacher and impacting young people's lives and with 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 traditional values is what I believe. And in 2014, as head coach of the Arizona State uh, University Sun Devils, your team finished number 12 in the country. Why was that team so special? Well, a lot of the similar things. I mean, we, uh, uh, you know, we we believe in the you know the four pillars of our program is is character, smart, discipline, tough, and and uh, a lot of people just kind of throw you know the word character out there. You know, uh, uh, character is a daily evaluation. You know, I I, I tell people that every day you're bright out or you're dull out. You know, you're a victor or a victim. Uh, you are grateful or you are entitled. Uh, you know, you're a giver or you're a taker, and that's a daily evaluation. And so it's so important to have focus in your life. And that's why, you know, we talk about faith, family, and football. That's one of the reasons why I come to Hawaii. I think I, it was a great fit because I have those values here. And that, that football team and every team that I've ever uh, had the privilege to, to coach and win championships, which, you know, I've never been to a place I haven't been able to win, it all goes back to those core values. And character speaks to service. 
It speaks to sacrifice. It speaks to that, hey, you, you come and you live your life and you, 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 you work every day in the service of others, in the service of your people. And that's what's magical about football is, is when you have that on a team and when you, you truly are selfless and, and you, uh, and that's not something that in society, it's all about individuality and all those things, but that's really not where you're really gonna find happiness. And, you know, as a, as a person that, um, I want our players to know what it is to be a giver. It's the greatest thing we could teach them. And all the teams that I've had, like that team that, that won championships, they all didn't just win on the field. You know, that team had over a 3.0 team GPA. We had the Scholar Athlete of the Year in the Pac-12 Conference. Uh, we had uh, uh, our quarterback was second for the Campbell Award for the best player. It's, it's like the academic Heisman in the country. Uh, and so, uh, you know, how you do anything is how you do everything. And, uh, uh, but character, uh, and, and when you have character, you serve, you tend to make better decisions. You tend to also, also value your intellect and that you make smart decisions. That produces discipline and discipline is the key ingredient uh, to being successful in any endeavor that you take on. And because if you're disciplined, you got a chance to be tough. Uh, if you're not disciplined and you're careless, uh, you, you, just, you just don't have a chance uh, to be tough. And, you, and the only way you're gonna win in football is to be tough. That's what I want to bring to Hawaii. I want to bring a physicality and a toughness. Uh, we talk about how, you know, we play offense with a defensive mentality. I mean, our, our mentality is, is, is that we want to be passionate about what we're doing and play with an unbelievable discipline about what we're doing. So all the teams that I've had that have been successful, I've been very fortunate that uh, young people will meet whatever expectation you set for them. And uh, that's what I found. And uh, they know if you love them, they know if you care about them, they know if you know what you're talking about and you have a plan. And so um, that's kind of the common denominator has been with the teams that I've worked with. And, and you can tell I'm passionate about it. I'm, I'm passionate about competing and playing and, and, and winning and winning championships, but it's not just winning games. It's about putting that spirit of integrity in their hearts and seeking the, seeking to, to really serve and to sacrifice for each other. And there's something about that, you know, you know, Vince Lombardi is one of my, my favorite coaches and you, 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 you work hard for a goal. You lay, you know, you know, beaten and battered on a field victorious. And that's what, that's what we're trying to accomplish and, and what we look to instill here at the University of Hawaii. Now, as the Hawaii coach, you know, you were out of coaching for two years because you, you really wanted to select a, a coaching position that was going to be a great fit for you and the school. And I, I really believe this is a great fit. And what did you learn during those two years while you were not coaching? Well, that's a great question. I'm going to tell you, uh, when that all happened, I'd never been fired from anything in my life. And uh, obviously, you know, we, we were winning, we were being successful and, and, and to, you know, to face that, you know, I really think it was one of the best thing that's ever happened to me uh, because, you know, I talk about faith, family and football in that order. And what I realized after taking some time away from the game and my wife asked me, she said, hey, we've been doing this for a long time and, you know, I want you to take some time away. And it taught me that, you know, that, that faith wasn't first in my life, that, that really it was football that was first. And so I think it's helped me and I learned so much. I grew so much spiritually and I, I know that uh, it helped me get my priorities in order. And you couldn't have told me that my priorities weren't in order because I, 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 we were doing it the right way and people from perception wise, uh, you know, said that we did it the right way. But I think I'm a better person. Uh, you know, I learned so much. I was never able to go and study. I, I got to spend training camp uh, with a, with a, the Patriots. Coach Belichick's a friend of mine. And so I got to sit in the room with Tom Brady and, and Coach McDaniel and just listen and learn. I never got to travel around the country and do that. You know, I've got uh, some of my former assistant coaches who were the head coach at Auburn and head coach at Arkansas, head coach at Memphis. Now the head coach at Florida State, uh, uh, you know, Coach Norvell at Nevada. Uh, you know, basically, I got guys all over the country that I got to go visit and really learn and and to to really rejuvenate myself as far as um, as a coach and as a teacher. 
Uh, and then I think I've become a better father. I went to every one of my son's football practices and uh, for the first time that I've ever gotten to do that. And, uh, and so it really just, it really helped me uh, kind of realize, I, I kind of realized, you know, just how little my wife expected from me. And, um, and just, it was just a, a, an opportunity that I think the good Lord really meant for that to happen because it helped me grow as a human being and as a person and as a teacher and as coach. And, and man, I'm gonna tell you now, sitting out 24 months, I, I'm, I was sure hungry to get back and, and to get on that field and to get on that grass. And then, then, then obviously came to Hawaii for six weeks and now it got taken away from me again. So uh, I, I know one thing, I'm not ever gonna take it for granted again. And, and I'm so blessed and so thankful that I have the opportunity to coach and teach and impact young people. And I'm pretty motivated, uh, but I, I think I learned more and I grew more as a person than anything that's happened to me. I love hearing that, Coach G, and we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond football. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Coach Todd Graham. We will be back in 60 seconds. Aloha. I'm John David Ann, the host of History Lens on Think Tech Hawaii. History Lens deals with contemporary events and looks at them through a historical perspective, or what we call a history lens. Uh, the show is streamed live on thinktechhawaii.com. Thanks so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. Mahalo and aloha. Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is our new University of Hawaii football coach. He is Coach Todd Graham, and today we are going beyond football. Coach G, I love your four pillars that you talked about earlier, and you also talk about uh, win every day. Can you expand more about what you mean about win every day? Well, you know, I think it's really important that you that you have goals, that you have a focus. You know, if we have you know, if you have clarity and focus, then you're able to execute. And so, um, you know, when every day really speaks to, I think people, when everyone has, uh, they want to be successful. They want to accomplish, say, okay, we want to be champions. We want to accomplish this goal. And that goal is usually in the top 1%. And, and then we'll look and say, okay, well, now what are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to do to reach that goal? And, and, I, and a lot of time the sacrifice doesn't match the goal. And so uh, the key that I found is not to sit around and focus on the goal all the time. The key is to win every rep, every practice, every day. And so that speaks to uh, what we call the 1%. We want to be in the 1% every day. At the end of the day, you know, uh, when I, when I, you know, right now, man, I'm, my, my world's changed like everybody else's. I'm doing Zoom meetings. I'm, I'm uh, calling on the phone or on Zoom meetings with my players, uh, you know, six, eight hours a day and uh, in, in, in working to teach and to try to make sure that we, we keep per, uh, pressing forward and to win the day. And so I asked myself at the end of the day, you know, um, you know, was I, was I at a level today? Did I win the Mountain West Championship today? And did I outwork? Did I reach my objective every single day? And that, that speaks to my attitude and my effort. How did I approach that? And so winning every day is something you just stack success. Uh, you know, that's the, and, and I, the other part of winning every day is speaking victory. And what I mean by that is, is self-talk is that, you know, speaking victory is not just talking positive to someone else or saying, hey, we're gonna accomplish, we're gonna win championships. Well, you know, that's just saying something. What do I really believe? What am I saying to myself? What are what type of confidence do I have? What is What type of self-talk am I having every single day? And so that's why I believe it's so powerful to win every day, you have to have a focus. That's why I believe in spending time 
having a focused time in the morning, a quiet time in the morning and, and reading, reading, I read from the book of victory, which is the Bible. And I, but I read a lot of other things that are motivational, that are, that are helping motivate and inspire me uh, to, to be the best at what I'm doing and being willing to sacrifice to reach those goals. And so when every day speaks to, I'm not interested in you having a good attitude. I'm not interested in, in, in me having great effort. I'm interested in my best every single day, every single rep. And if you'll focus on doing that and just stack success every day, that's the key to living a championship life. Coach G, I totally agree with you. You know, in my books, I talk about character like you do. And I talk about having that superior culture of excellence. And, you know, a lot of people can give a great effort. They can have a great attitude. And I, for me, with my teams, I'd be like, hey, that's not good enough. We need to have superior effort. We need to give a superior attitude. So my my top priority as a coach was to develop champion athletes of character first and then great tennis players second. And I know you're the same and you, you're, you speak so highly about character. And, you know, for me, I could coach tennis afterwards. You can coach football afterwards. So what are your thoughts about that? Well, I, I think the key is, like you're saying, I mean, you know, uh, so, so many people uh, in sports, uh, you know, you go to clinics and you listen to other coaches and, and people kind of copy other people and they, they put so much emphasis on scheme, uh, you know, and really what truly matters is what's in the heart. You have to train the heart first. If you can captivate the heart, then you're able to impact the mind and the body follows. And so, you know, uh, but, but, you know, you, you can motivate through fear or you can motivate through trust. And so, you know, to me, it's like you're saying is that, you know, everybody wants to win championships, but 90% of the people are all doing the same things. They have the same sacrifice. They're putting in the same amount of work. They're doing all the same things. Uh, to me, it, it's to be elite. You have to know who we are and how, how does that separate us? Uh, from everyone else. And, and I think that's the key is, I, you know, is being genuinely who you are, uh, knowing your identity, uh, knowing your focus and where you're going and be able to focus on that every single day. And to understand if you want to be elite, you want to be a champion, that's going to require an unbelievable sacrifice every day. And in our society, it's, it's so much, you know, I want this and I want that. You, you, you can want all you want. You're not guaranteed anything. Uh, you're not entitled to anything. Uh, you reap what you sow. You get what you work for. And you have to first and foremost convince yourself. Uh, you, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, I don't get my confidence from you. Uh, I don't get my confidence from anybody that's watching this program. And there's not a person that can take my confidence. And that's because that I speak victory, that I have a belief and I have an investment and I've worked in my thinking and my focus every day is one that, that is of an elite status and that, that I'm, I'm focused every day on winning and stacking success and doing things the right way. And I have a cause in my heart. See, there's gotta be that cause in your heart from who you play for. So, you know, coaches will, will say, it's the name on the front of the jersey that's the most important, not the name on the back. And I totally disagree with that because see that name on the back of my jersey, I would die for. I would, I mean, my family, I would die for my family. And so that is the cause that's in my heart. So, you know, that's one of the things we do as coaches. You know, I actually put a picture on each of our players' lockers of the person that put them there. Okay, so is your mom, is your dad? For me, it was my mother who sacrificed and suffered and poured into me and gave to me and served me discipline and structure that, 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 that really afforded me to be successful in life. So every day I will walk in the locker room, we'll blow a whistle three times, we stand at attention and we focus on that picture. And I want them to think in their heart, you know, the sacrifice that has been made for them to be here. And then I want them to think how they're going to honor it by how we do everything we do, how we go to class, how we go to study hall, how we work out, how we lift, how we train. And to me, when you have that cause in your heart, then that's how you become 
that's the that's the essential ingredient to what separates champions from people that just participate. I love I love hearing that, Coach G. And another thing that I talk about in my books are that great leaders build other great leaders. And like you mentioned earlier, you've had 12 of your assistant coaches who became head coaches now. So you're catching up to to coaches like Nick Saban and Bill Belichick <laughs> and Coach G. I want to know, I want to know what is it about Coach uh, Bill Belichick that you admire so much? Uh, he's a teacher. I mean, uh, and, and really the, the thing that I admire the most and I've learned the most from him about is that he, he really doesn't try to do what everybody else is doing. And he always tells me, you know, I'll say, you know, why do you think, you know, you, you know you're, you have had so much success is because he doesn't buy into the NFL. You know, everybody else is, is running their program like these, like professional football. He, he still coaches the best players, the hardest. Uh, he still, uh, you know, has a values and standards from how they approach everything they do. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the hard work, dedication and discipline that it requires to be successful. Uh, you know, he, th that's where they separate themselves from everyone else. And, and so uh, that, that to me, you know, one of the reasons that, that I think is a great measurement of your success as leaders, what are your players doing five years down the road, 10 years down the road, you know, obviously our coaches. And, and that's one of the things I've prided myself on is I want to, I've been able to hire, uh, I've not looked at hiring the most popular person or, 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 or win the press conference, you know, for who thinks the, the biggest name person I could hire. Uh, many of the coaches like Coach Malazan and Coach Morris, uh, Mike Norvell were not popular hires at the time when I hired them. They had very little college experience, but they were great men of integrity and great character. They were teachers. Uh, they wanted to make a difference. That, that, that's the commonality. But they all have this, they have this activation in their heart. They, they have this cause in their heart as a teacher that they're so passionate about. This is not a job for them, but it, it's a cause. It's a ministry. And, and so that's where I've, I've been fortunate enough to, to get to hire the right people because I have a process in place. And then developing, to me, that's what it's all about. Man, when you, you we want to recruit young people uh, that that have the character, uh, that 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 value their academics, that embrace discipline, uh, and that are tough, and that speaks to their competitiveness. And when you have that commonality, then now you're able to train at a different level. You're able to develop at a different level, and because uh, you can't, it's hard to convert people and convince people of what your, your philosophy is. I only have 48 months with these players. I've got to get young people that come in that, that believe in the, in the values of our program and, and what we're all about. So, you know, and I'm proud that I've had so many coaches that have gone on and be successful. But if you go down to, if you go to Florida State right now and you, you watch Coach Norvell, uh, they're going to have a very similar philosophy uh, of how they go. It's going to be character, smart, discipline, tough, uh, and it's faith, family, and football. And uh, everyone there is 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 there to serve others. My job as the head football coach is to serve uh, my staff, to serve my players, and and that's not just with uh, high fives. Uh, that's with discipline and with structure and teaching them grit and toughness, uh, as as well as you know organizational skills and making sure that we're that that we have an organization that that is that is has a great plan and that we're able to execute that plan. So. Uh, from Coach Belichick, I think I've learned, you know, to blaze your own trail, to be unique and genuine to who you are, because that's what matters. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I think as a head coach, I think the reason why I've had success training others is because, you know, I hired people that believe the same things that I believe. And I, I, I believe in the teacher model. I'm a teacher. I'm an educator. Uh, and I, and I want to make a difference. And I, I think players, um, they know that. They know what's in your heart. They know if you're just trying to teach them to win a game, or do you really care about them? And um, and then you gotta you gotta know them. You know you, you know each player, man. He you know you know that's why I like those pictures on that locker, man. I, is that I tell our players, and I and I want our our uh, you know parents that are out there that are listening to this that that have players that are playing for me. Their dreams are my dreams, and I'm gonna work with a passion 
to help them accomplish their dreams. What an amazing job to get to do this. I can't believe that I, that I get to do something that I love so much and you know, I've never worked a day in my life. And so I just like being around people like that. And, and um, I've just never, you know, the, the end result of, of being successful, I know we're gonna win because we're gonna win every day. Coach G, I love your insights. You definitely go beyond the lines. And I love that you're sharing about the identity that you really want for your team, uh, not just now, but in the future. And really want to thank you for taking time in your schedule to, to be on the show today. I appreciate you having me. Go Bows. Thanks, Coach G. Thank you. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. I hope that Coach G and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.